Since its first release back in 2015, NeoVim has come a long way. There has been massive improvements from its humble beginnings of just being a simple fork of Vim with async functionality and a built-in terminal. NeoVim since then has moved on to aspire to do a lot greater things such as supporting tree sitter, language server protocol support, as well as adding Lua as an extension language. Even though it was already there, it was never first class and now it is actually built into the editor rather than being a sort of tacked on feature. Even more has happened since then and NeoVim has gained a strong, strong fan base as well as gained popularity quite a lot over the last few years, becoming a whole new behemoth in its own space rather than just being lumped in with Vim. Now I've used Vim and eventually when the 0.1 version came out back in 2015, I also uh, began using NeoVim and really enjoyed it. Um, back then it wasn't quite as crazy and eventually when Lua support was added, I played around with it and I really enjoyed the editor itself. However, for reasons mentioned in another video of mine linked up here, I moved away from NeoVim to try out Emacs and I've really enjoyed it. Now that's not to say that I don't still love Vim and NeoVim, I actually think they're both very powerful editors and I also like Emacs at the same time. And while I've been away, I've seen that there is a lot of power in Emacs that NeoVim lacks and really could have been there. But a lot of the reasons that Vim never had it was really because even though it was an extensible editor, it never really treated itself like extensibility was its primary focus. Not to say that it isn't extensible, just more so that it didn't expose its core functionality the same way that Emacs tried to. Now if you've paid attention to the main development going on in NeoVim, you've noticed a big change happen. A lot of this core functionality has slowly been exposed more and more to the user space, making things like extending different features a lot easier and making it exposed via Lua. And so with this, NeoVim is starting to kind of blur the line between Vim and Emacs, and I think that's for the better. Um, in fact, I think it's leading to a lot of really interesting plugins coming out, and I think there's a lot of potential in this area for NeoVim. And for this reason, I've collected five different things that I would like to see added in NeoVim, and even maybe if I'm interested, I might make issues for it or look into existing issues for these. These were just things that I either found I was missing when I used NeoVim before and still see that it's missing, or features that since I started using Emacs, I've realized have a lot of potential. Now, before we get into that, I would like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant. When it comes to learning, a lot of what we do in the current day and age is doing things passively, whether that be listening to your teacher or watching a tutorial. But most of us really know that the best way to learn is by engaging with the material. That's one of the greatest things about Brilliant. Brilliant gives you hands-on lessons in things like mathematics, computer science, and the general sciences. Brilliant's approach to creative problem solving really boosts your creativity in coming up with new solutions to problems while sticking to actually learning the subject matter. Brilliant offers more than 60 courses in different forms of mathematics, science, and computer science that you guys can start applying. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash Gavin Freeborn. The first 200 of you will receive 20% off Brilliant's premium annual subscription. Now the first thing I would like to see is taking advantage of this new client server architecture that NeoVim has pushed so hard to introduce. Um, I didn't mention it before, but NeoVim sort of extracted the interface from the editor to allow for GUIs graphical user interfaces to take greater advantage of the editor and extend it. Now this is done a lot and I know NeoVim has recently been trying to push this functionality closer into the editor to be able to allow you to uh, run from the command line different commands and pass them into an existing instance of NeoVim and sort of run some Lua code or something like that. But a lot of the functionality that I really like about that I would love to see extended into the actual editor itself allowing you to have multiple clients connected to the same instance of the editor at once. Now, the biggest question that I get a lot when I mention this as being a thing that I would like to see in NeoVim is a couple of questions of why does this even matter? And the biggest reason is that if you use multiple monitors, which recently has become very common, especially for those people working from home, a lot of people have multiple monitors at their house and they're no longer restricted by their job not having multiple monitors. Now with multiple instances, this means that we can have two instances of NeoVim in multiple terminals running on different monitors, meaning that say you can be looking at code in one monitor, looking at code in the other, and you can kind of compare them and use them and share buffers between them. Now this might sound small to a lot of you guys, but a really big advantage of this is being able to share buffers that are not editable or not files, um, which goes quite a long way. And it's kind of hard to like show a good example of this just 
off the top, but a good example of this is just being able to like say if I open something in this instance, I know it's an available buffer in this instance, and I can use say something like telescope to select it. Uh, every edit I make is shared in real time with the other window. I don't have to really worry about like saving it and then maybe I don't save it in the other one and I end up messing up versions. You can do a lot of different things and it's just extremely powerful. Now I realize that some of this functionality supposedly existed in Vim via an extension to the actual functionality of the editor for remote stuff, and I know NeoVim has been working on this, but I don't think it's quite on the functionality that I'm talking about right now. Now the next feature is something that I, at this point, have wanted for an extremely long time, almost, I don't know, it must be like five years now at this point, where I've wanted this functionality, and that is making OmniComplete more extensible in the editor. I think OmniComplete, which is kind of the intelligent completion built into Vim, really has a lot of potential and should be focused on extending that. Make it so that way OmniComplete also exposes ways to actually um, filter and all this sort of stuff, exposing that in the completion interface in NeoVim itself. Don't make this something that requires some other plugin to integrate it because I know it's great to have all of these, but at this point, it seems like every two years at the latest, at least, there is a new plugin framework that I have to adjust my like editor to work with. Um, and eventually I got sick of this. And if you look at my video on uh, how completion works in Vim, which is up here, you guys can go ahead and take a look at that video. Uh, you can see that I gave up on all these frameworks and I used something called Mew Complete, which did a really good job at integrating with uh, Vim's integrated completion system. And I think it's really powerful, but it's really held back by the fact that there doesn't seem to be any desire to actually make it useful um, past a certain point of just being individual completions. Having something like Mew Complete that has a fallback functionality just built into it and making Omni Complete able to be more asynchronous, exposing a lot of this functionality rather than making it so that way every plugin has to do it itself um, just kind of makes this really difficult. Make it so that way you don't need just one Omni Complete, you don't need to come up with some function to loop these all together. Just making these things more exposed goes a long way. Sorry if this sounds like I'm kind of complaining here. This is just something that I think is really powerful and I love Vim's built-in completion. And it's just a real shame that every single time someone comes out with a new framework, even though OmniComplete could be the point of extension, a lot of these different languages or plugins or all these sort of different things decide to use these frameworks for extending them. And as a result, OmniComplete does not get any more functionality. A couple of years from now, when that framework's no longer active and a bunch of plugins exist that try to add different completion sources to it, they all just kind of become thrown away. Way, which is just really disappointing to have to see this happen over and over and over again. I know that there was talk about this. I know TJ was actually talking about extending this, but I haven't seen anything related to that. So let me know down in the comments if I'm missing something. Now, moving on to number three, this is one that I like the previous one, have made a video related to, which is the compiler plugins. Once again, links right up there. And something that I would love to see is making this asynchronous. So what do I mean? Well, compiler plugins are a built-in feature in the editor. You can sort of go down, you can do colon, compiler, and then give it the name of a compiler, and that sets up things like a program that will run when you do colon make and enter. That will run as a way to compile things. Uh, as well as an error format, which is kind of how it takes that output, converts it into something that can go into quick fix and you can kind of jump between different lines, super powerful. Both of those two things are not really actually fully featured in the editor as far as asynchronousy. Right now it's all synchronous, which sucks for anything that takes a long time to compile. For something like C++, it's practically unusable because a lot of projects there just compile for so long. You want it to be asynchronous so it's not blocking the entire editor. Um, and this is what I would really like like to see happen. There is Vim Dispatch, which has done this, but other than that, and Vim Dispatch at this point, unfortunately, is kind of getting thrown away because these days, um, love it or hate it, NeoVim is pushing for using Lua for everything. So trying to get people to use Vim Dispatch, which is purely Vim script and supports both options of Vim or NeoVim, unfortunately, is probably not going to happen. Now, right now, I know that there are solutions for this, uh, solutions, which Basically, like hundreds, maybe even thousands of these exist, which are basically plugins that allow you to compile code um, or even get like inserting, highlighting, and all that sort of stuff. So, an example of that would be like something like Ale or Syntastic, which has existed forever. Um, there's a lot of ones recently that have come out, but at this point, I just would like to see this become fully featured, especially in existing um, FT plugins. FT plugins, for those of you that don't know, are 
uh, specific plugins. A lot of them are included with NeoVim um, that basically add extra functionality dependent on the language that you're editing in. Um, so a good example of this that's recently been in there is Rust, which last I checked, I haven't checked recently, had its own compile uh, like function that it was written and because of that like it doesn't even use the compiler functionality i'm pretty sure it uses its own sort of solution to try and enter that into the quick fix and so this is like a pretty big problem i think making this a fully featured uh, part of the editor goes a long way um, and i'm not saying these other plugins don't have value i just think like making this first class does a lot and it means that built-in features in the editor can start taking advantage of it um, especially ft plugins are a great example of ones that really should be using these rather than forcing people to use like this one-off solution and it means that other plugins out there in the world can take advantage of this and like make it look nicer they can make it function a specific way that some people might like it can do a lot and i think there is a lot of potential here all right, now we're on to probably my biggest complaint and sort of critique, and I think something that can really be improved and go a long way, and that is making command mode more extensible. When I say command mode, I mean when you hit colon and you get that sort of input area where you can kind of type things in. Uh, unfortunately, as of now, it's not the most extensible thing. Completion sources for it aren't really consistent. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of exposed functionality for using Lua with it. Um, last I checked, I could be wrong on that one. Um, and so because of that, we end up in this kind of in-between area where packages like Telescope and FCF, while they would like to use these commands and sort of do some sort of intelligent completion functionality, they instead make their own commands that you'll run, and then they open up their own interface, and then you are given predefined completions or some sort of algorithm or something like that that will give you completions based on that. Now, what a lot of people would pro, well, at least I would like, is something in between that, something where I can extend something like wild menu. For those of you that aren't aware, wild menu is when you're in, in command mode, you type in something and you hit tab, um, you can enable it. Uh, maybe I'll put the setting down in the description or something for those of you that haven't seen this before. But you can hit tab and you'll get some completions. And I know NeoVim has extended this quite a lot, which is great. But the issue is that you don't really have the extensibility that I would like to see. I would like the extensibility to be able to replace the wild menu interface. I know something like Wilder exists, which I have played with before, and I think it is really, really cool, but it's not really a first class feature in the editor. It breaks a lot. It's not, it's not perfect. Um, and I think integrating this extensibility goes a long way, allowing people to write their own interfaces for it um, and allowing something like Telescope to replace your command mode and make it sort of first class would go a long way. And this is something that I got from Emacs. Um, I'll show a little example of me using it there's something there's a lot of different ways that you can get completions and you can create your own interfaces in emacs you can have plugins that extend these interfaces so for example something like marginalia is another plugin for emacs that gives you descriptions of all these different commands and all these different completions which goes a long way uh, there's a lot of potential here and i think this is kind of a power powerful feature in emacs and i think it should really start to make its way into neovim rather than having all these different fuzzy finding frameworks that require people to make thousands and thousands of different commands to consider every single edge case that you would want to use command mode for and at this point a lot of people just don't use command mode because of this like they just don't see much functionality because you have all these different tools and so as a result you kind of end up in this weird in between where if you use command mode you lose out on this completion sort of feature but then if you don't use command mode you get all these powerful features but you can't really um how to describe them you can't really compose them very well which is one of the greatest things about command mode is it allows you to compose these things very easily something also worth noting is uh NVIM CMP, like the completion framework for as you type completion, I think has a command mode way to extend it, which is really powerful and really cool. And so that would be a good example of what I'm talking about. And I think there is potential here. Um, and I think it can go a long way in making command mode a more prominent part of the editor again. Since as of now, I regularly mention things in command mode to people when they ask for help in NeoVim, and they've just never used it, which I find insane, uh, considering that it was something that I consider to be an insanely powerful feature. And even using Emacs now, 
I find myself missing it every once in a while for different things where I know it would be just a simple one-liner, easy to do in command mode, but in Emacs, I would have to either make a macro for it or something like that. And finally, we move on to the last thing that I would like to see. Um, now, this one comes with an asterisk because while it is the last thing I would like to see, that doesn't mean that there aren't alternative options for this. And this is integrating things like REPLs a bit more into the editor. Now, something like Conjure has come a long way in supporting this. And so because of that, I don't think this is a must, but I think you can get a lot of functionality out of having something like this built into the editor. A big example of this is being able to do things like jump to definition for Lua um, and stuff like that and integrating that a bit more into the editor. I don't know... I'm not completely sure if that's 100% necessary. In Emacs, there's a thing called xref, which is basically a generic way to jump to definitions. So in Vim and NeoVim, we have tags as well as being able to use something like your language server to jump to definition. Um, and I think taking advantage of that for things that don't use tags, because let's be honest, not a lot of people these days use tags, and kind of exposing that in a first-class way could go a long way. Um, especially in the ways of integrating with REPLs. But like I said before, REPL functionality is not exactly a thing that I require. Um, and I think kind of like I find regularly trying to explain this to people, a lot of people don't really get where I'm coming from when I say this. Um, so I don't think this will make a lot of sense to people if they aren't experienced using languages like Lisps, where the REPL is a lot more functional and useful, but NeoVim doesn't really give you a great way to expose that. But I think Conjure, like I said before, is going a long way in making this better. Anyways, guys, that's it for today's video. I just wanted to give a big thank you for all of you guys who made it through the rest of the video, especially you. I really appreciate it. And I hope this didn't come off as if I had an issue with NeoVim. NeoVim's a great project. Vim as well. I love both of them and a lot of this really comes from a place of love for both the projects. I don't really mean for this to come off as me just criticizing them blindly. I realize that they have done a lot. They're really powerful tools um, and I just wanted to kind of speak them things that have been on my mind, some places that I think could be improved or maybe looked at. Um, and maybe a lot of the things that I think are improvements aren't things that you agree with and aren't places that the project agrees with, which I totally understand. Uh, I hope that at least I provided a bit of entertainment in this tiny little blink in your life, and I hope that uh, you got some use out of it. And I'd be remiss if I ended off this video without thanking my beautiful, awesome supporters on Patreon. If you would like to support this channel, you can go ahead and find me over there. Or if you want to support me on GitHub Sponsors, I also accept those as well. And thank you to those guys as well. You guys make it possible for me to keep producing videos. Uh, since this isn't really a source of income, and these videos, while they might seem short and simple, they do take some time, and it is hard for me to really find time to make them. And so this helps keep me... Um, interest and be able to give myself an excuse for why I'm looking into a lot of the different topics I look into. Anyways, that's it for today's video, and I'll see you guys next time. <music>